going on, Jason? I'm Will. This is Joey. He's a former student of yours, and we're going to be talking about Pulp Fiction today and why it feels like an independent film, as well as discussing points on the independent spirit it possesses, as well as what made it so popular. Yeah, let's do it. So, Joey, tell me, when was the when was the last time you saw Pulp Fiction? Um, last time I saw Pulp Fiction was probably freshman year of college, so about a year and a half ago. Okay. But um, it is probably one of the only films that sticks with me from Tarantino because he's so controversial as yeah. an artist. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's been, it's been quite a bit, but um, it's definitely still in the brain, so I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that's a great point to bring up those contra- controversial. I mean, obviously, this is a film that's that's led by a lot of dialogue. You know, there's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot going on. Yeah, there's a little bit of action, but I think you definitely see in the film. Uh, I think one of the best examples actually is when Jackson and and uh, uh, oh, I still in my mind who played the guy in Greece. Oh, um, I just watched this movie too, like thirty minutes ago. <laughs> no, you watched it um, before you came over here. Um, I see. Oh, it's totally in my. Well, his name is Vincent Vega in the film. Uh huh. You know, um, we can pull up a cast list while we're doing it, but uh, go ahead. Anyway, uh, I think a great example of this is at the beginning of the film when he, when when Vincent, when Vincent Vega and uh, and Samuel Jackson. Now I'm using actor and, and casting. It's okay, but they're, they're standing. Perfect. They're standing in the in the hallway and they're having a, having a conversation before they go into kind of like read yeah, these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just a super long shot of them just standing and standing there talking. It's. I think it lasts for at least a minute. It's just the same shot. The camera doesn't move, nothing. And I think that that's already indicative of, you know, uh, an independent style. I mean, it's a little different. Yeah, and you know what? I think the simplicity of it kind of also adds to the... Because compl- you're just sitting there and you're listening. Yeah. And so it forces you to kind of think right. about what what um, where the context is coming from and, and what they're even talking about, if it matters at right, all, right. because the conversation is... So out there, but yeah, no, I uh, I agree. I think um, the indie nature, um, that that shot was real cheap. But you know what, John Travolta right. and uh, Samuel Jackson having that conversation, I think. Uh, there we go, John Travolta. As uh, that's, Vega, that's, that's Vincent, the name. Yeah. That's Vincent. That was the name I was looking yeah, for. Yeah. No, but um, yeah, I think that's very indie uh, indie nature of them to to yeah. take that into um, and it's composition, you know, leading lines and everything straight to straight to the action, but. Um, they enter that scene, and then I right. think I think in that same shot they exit the scene too, and yeah, I think so. and go into the room where. Yeah. Well, he comes towards you actually. I think towards the, the camera. Yeah, he kind of closes the scene out by Samuel Jackson walks towards you. If I remember correctly, he walks towards you, and that's kind of how the scene closes out. Is, mm-hmm. uh, okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. But uh, how do you feel like that differs from something that was maybe a little more traditional in Hollywood at the time? Well, this was filmed in. 90 94 four? well yeah. that it wasn't filmed but it was released yep 94 um they got the script in 92 and 93 yeah when it was written and i think I, I don't do you know the budget for the film uh it was between eight and ten million i believe yeah so i mean it's super cheap right. so everything they had to do was everything that they had to do they had to refer to the budget you know do yeah, we have enough exactly. time and money to do the shot right. and so they actually took a while to film it though i think it was 60 days on that was the, oh, the film time 60, between 60 and 70 days for filming so I mean they went two months into it so yeah. I mean the, definitely the planning and, and all that but um, in regards to your question how it kind of compares to um, bigger right uh, yeah yeah bigger no, I mean, budget films how do you feel like that that style differed from that longer those longer scenes that were led by dialogue you know I feel like that wasn't something that you necessarily saw so much in Hollywood at the time Maybe you see that a little bit more today, just because everybody's trying to mirror. I also think it mission. was yes. I it was definitely um, would you, economically efficient, right. <laughs> but I also think it was an artistic choice, an artistic right. style Absolutely. by Tarantino, um, which is kind of all indie filmmaking is about: is matching your artistic style with um, cheap, <laughs> yeah, right. Right. cheap and efficient. Which I feel like um, cheap, efficient, and effective is what indie filmmaking is. And yeah. so when you get into the bigger budgets and you're able to spend that money like on Marvel films and how they're spending $250 million a film, unless it's a guaranteed return, right. which most Marvel films are, um, they're not going to go into those. Yeah, absolutely. There's so, a lot less room for, for experimentation. Yeah, and, and, and part of it um, with the Marvel films too is that they're selling people on something absolutely. that's oh, already the brand. Written. 
Marvel's it's, a brand. Yeah, and so, and although I think we've seen Pulp Fiction become that too, to an extent. It's got such a cult following. Yeah. And I think that uh, that's now kind of a... Uh, if you're going to have an indie film, it's going to be indie because it has this cult following, right? This film really mm-hmm. resonates with a lot of hipsters, and you look at hipsters, and, well, they're kind of known for being an independent spirit, and I think yeah. that that film, that, that Pulp Fiction really captured this mm-hmm. uh, at the time, and as a result has been this kind of uh, defining characteristics of what it, defining characteristic of what it means to be independent. It really feeds into those independent spirits who, who really follow the film in a cult-like way. Yeah, and, and you know, I think um, a lot of that comes from style like we've been talking about but kind of Tarantino's experience you know the experience he's had in writing that right. in writing uh, uh, that film and that specific scene you know a lot of what is seen on screen um, isn't thought about how leading up to it um, how can I say this so um, you don't think how how much work is even though they're just standing there and they're just talking yeah. and, and, and it's just one single shot you don't know how much work is put into that 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 take has probably been uh, been done. They probably had to do that scene a thousand times. All right. Yeah. So I mean, just again back to the um, indie filmmaking. I think you know Tarantino definitely uh, put in the time and effort and, and planning yeah. and scheduling and, and doing all that. Which you know in indie filmmaking you wear multiple hats, and so right. that's what I imagine he went through. It was 1994, so you don't have the uh, um, technology that we do now, right. but even then, it still gets into yeah. money. And no, and I mean, he did such a great job with this film, too. I mean, I believe it was his, his second really big film. He had one real good one. I don't remember which film that was in particular, but I know this was kind of his second big film as a young industry vet, and I think that that's uh, a common trend that we saw as well in the independent world and still see today in the independent world of filmmaking, and that is you'll see these young industry veterans go and try and uh, throw, buck the horse, if you will, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah. Really revamp what's what what it means to be normal. They're, they're innovative, you know. Kind of like a what's a, a get out. Yeah. We were just talking about before this was um uh, Jordan Peele or yeah I think his name is Jordan Peele. How this is on you? You're the film guy. Yeah 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 no, no um he did um uh, he did get out which was just it blew everyone's mind because right. it was a horror film. Well it was more of a psychological thriller than horror but. That um, comes out of Bloomhouse production too, doesn't it? I believe. Uh, yes. Yeah, which, which is like low budget horror. Very films. low budget, but I don't know if that would that would be considered indie. I'm not sure. I think it. Well, I think well, again, I think indie is such a gray line. I mean, it's really where yeah. okay, big standard Hollywood production meets mm-hmm. this more homemade, low, 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 you know, like college student film, right? Yeah, and that's the other thing is a lot. A lot of the controversy between whether or not Pulp Fiction is an indie film. Um, uh, is because I think Disney owns what was the production company that Miramax, Disney, which Disney Mir- owns. Disney owns, and with Disney being a big, huge company, people think that um, because Disney owns that, it's not an in, right. indie film. Absolutely. Which I know it's not really. If it is an indie film, it's it's um, whether or not it has uh, the indie feel, I guess. Right. Um, but yeah, I I feel like worrying about whether or not it's an indie film takes away from the entire point. No, absolutely. Yeah, because <laughs> I think, okay, maybe it's, is it hardline indie? Maybe not, because, okay, why? Well, it had a decent budget. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it was also produced, it came out of Miramax, which was owned by Disney, but if you look at Miramax, I mean, their story is a little bit more indie, the way Weinstein kind of built that company. Mm-hmm. It has this indie spirit to it, and I think that if we're going to talk about whether or not uh, Pulp Fiction is a, is an indie film by label. I think that that's really hard to define it as. Oh, it's an indie film because it really does draw from the pool of, of true independent films and Hollywood films. It walks that gray line for sure, but I think yeah. it's definitely uh, independent in spirit and style. Yeah, for sure. And you know what? Even if people were to define it as indie film or not, um, personally, I think I would consider it an indie film, but I consider it to be the biggest indie right. film ever absolutely. made. I think it disrupted what indie film was, it, actually. It definitely re- renamed um, independent film. It set new standards, for yeah. sure. I mean, it went, it it, it, it won the, the uh, I don't remember how to pronounce it. But Academy? It, no, no, it, it? at uh, Cannes Film Festival. Cannes? Cannes oh, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah. Cannes. Yeah. It won the, what's the, the highest prestigious, Paul... 
P. It's because of the P. No, I, no, but I know it won the award. And yeah, it, it won the it big award. It definitely changed a couple. It, it turned a couple heads. That's, right. That's, yeah, that's for sure. And I mean, it definitely got the critics talking, and I think that's another characteristic though of a good indie film, right? It, it gets the critics talking. It, it, it gets awards. Yeah. And I think that's part of what makes it indie. I know you mentioned that you felt like Tarantino was uh, a little bit of a controversial director, and I think we definitely saw that in this film with the racial slurs he used oh, and, yeah. and the violence he used. And 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 you know what? I think the one you were referring to uh, previously was Kill Bill. Hmm. Um, I don't know when that one came out, but I know he's had history with controversial topics. Right. And I do. I remember he was on the, he was uh, being interviewed on the news about Kill Bill and how it represents uh, uh, women. And his perspective was, there's chicks kicking ass. What is there to, why is there, why is it even being questioned? And it wasn't about the chicks, it was about the violence that it, it represented. Right. Kind of the reason behind it. Is it violence for the sake of violence? Is it action for the sake of, yeah. it, it, it's the story and, and everything behind it. And I think um, lately in, in independent filmmaking today, I think that's becoming more and more. Right, what racial issues are we addressing? What sexuality is Yeah, because 2018 ain't 1994. Right, exactly, so, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that that's a characteristic that Pulp Fiction really holds strongly on to, and that is, you know, mm -hmm. it, 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 it made pe people feel uncomfortable. It was independent in that spirit as well, in the sense that, you know, it, it addressed uh, in a very interesting way racial issues. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And another another very important uh, um, discussion topic, I would say, with um, Pulp Fiction is its story structure. Right. And I think this is just my I, – maybe I haven't done enough research, but my personal opinion in him – kind of jumping back and forth in right, time. Right, that non-chronological... Yeah, the non-linear kind of uh, yep. narrative structure. Um, I feel that, again, it had to do with the budget they were given. Eight yeah. to ten million, I think you said. And I know it was low, but um, I think some of the story was... Um, you know, pick up scenes and move them and put right. them over here. I think that was highly uh, affected by the budget yeah. because of their time and money and their management skills and getting getting it done I think they had to, to specifically align certain yeah and that things. even reminds me a little bit of, of how Christopher Nolan did, did Memento right mm, With, yeah. is it exactly the same no but it, it definitely pulls from that idea of okay we're not going to go in a chronological order and I think that that's kind of become a uh, something that is held on to by indie, indie films right I think he, a lot of indie films, we feel like all these non-chronological uh, mm -hmm. storylines or narratives. Yeah, and I think with Memento, I think you had told me this. You had watched something, but um, the story is kind of it starts here and then it. It's I don't a hairpin. know. Hairpin. It's a hairpin. Hairpin. Yes, that's what yeah. you said. Yeah, I watched a. Uh, I watched a, a very, very long uh, <laughs> YouTube video where Christopher Nolan sat down on a chalkboard and actually talked about the entire film and how it was laid yeah, out. And you know what? He's, what, he's, he's what got one of the greatest filmmaking moments Absolutely. of the century, seriously, though. But he, along with Tarantino, yeah. and, and these guys are now known as veterans, right? right? Yeah. But the upcoming film, uh, the upcoming filmmaker, makers like... Um, Jordan Peele or, or, or right. Ryan Coogler. Ryan Coogler is the one who did uh, Black Panther. Yep. Um, and uh, Fruitvale Station with Michael B. Jordan. He's also doing Creed, and I think they're doing Creed 2 now, which is supposed to blow minds, and I'm super excited. But, um, yeah, I think with independent filmmaking, um, that's where your basis of filmmaking is. That's where kind of all the... All the um, you can resort to independent filmmaking right. if you have to. You can't resort to Hollywood tactics and Hollywood styles. Right. And, right. And but you can take something that that is that is independent and bring it up and, to the and you can bring it up to, to something that, that feels like a Hollywood film. Not necessarily in terms of budget or like on paper, it doesn't necessarily feel mm -hmm. like a Hollywood film. But uh, to the viewer, it, it's just this amazing experience, right? And I think that maybe that's what we've seen as, as defining factors of independent films, right? They're ensemble driven. Uh, you know, they're maybe directed by a younger by a younger director mm -hmm. who has some industry experience, though. You know, yeah. uh, they're probably low budget, right? Uh, they might star uh, big name actors in yep. in comparison, star big name actors along with uh, lesser known actors. I think that we saw that also in in 
in Pulp Fiction. I think we saw somebody like Bruce Willis, you know, a little bit more well known. John Travolta, a little bit more well known. Yeah. Uh, but then you have people like Uma Thurma and and Samuel Jackson who were maybe a little bit. They were up and coming. Yeah, yeah they, they were. were up they were. They were. They were, they were known, but they weren't. No, their you know, stardom level definitely. They were definitely these uh, were a big, big A list stars, and the timer's going off. But that. Anyway. No, yeah, I'm with it. Yeah, no, independent filmmaking is. One of the greatest things too, and like I said, it's it. You can take indie, indie. You can take indie tactics and move them to the Hollywood level. Yeah, absolutely. That's, it's because when you're up here and you're doing all this on time and money, and you mess up, there's right. There's room to experiment. <laughs> yes. To experiment with indie film, and that's I think what makes it so special. And I think yeah. that Pulp Fiction definitely met all of, all of that, right? Like, is it a hundred percent an indie film on paper? Not necessarily. I mean, yeah. yeah, it was produced by by uh, by Miramax, who's owned by Disney. Yeah. Uh, it had a list stars, right? It had a pretty good distribution. Uh, you know, their their uh, their marketing for it was was huge to an extent. And I just I wish I was on set, man. I wish I knew what they were going <laughs> right, through. Right, absolutely. You know what? The experience and the amount of knowledge learned that day on set is just you can't, yeah, it's unfathomable. No, you know, totally, so. totally, totally. And I think that yeah, okay. Again, it's not indie on on paper necessarily, mm-hmm. but definitely indie in spirit. Why? Because you know it's directed by this young industry veteran who totally changes the way in which a story is told by you know telling it out of order. Right? Uh, you have this pairing of stars with upcoming stars. Mm-hmm. You have the addressment. You address racial issues in it. You make people feel uncomfortable. You change the game. And I think that that's what it means to be independent. Is you're changing the game, right? And then, who knows what happens from there. But yeah, after that, it's just, you start putting it in the history books. <laughs> Absolutely, and I think Tarantino did that. He changed the game with, with Pulp Fiction, and I think that's why it's Indian spirit. Yeah, and that's why uh, he did it when he was up and coming, and now I think it's our turn. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> turn absolutely, no, I totally agree with that. And I think uh, maybe the best way to put it is, you know, my definition of indie maybe is this. Uh, my you definition have, could be totally different. Yeah, absolutely. Than, yeah. And that's what's great about it. Right. Indie filmmaking can be so many different things. Oh, no, totally. And I think that, you know, what indie filmmaking is, is you have the Hollywood industry who does everything the same way. And then you have somebody come in who, like Quentin Tarantino, who is independent minded. And yeah, he uses the resources available to him in Hollywood, but he's independent through doing it. Yep. He follows his vision, he does it his way. And as a result, he changed the game. And he made one of the best indie films of all time, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, I, I would Quentin agree with Tarantino. That. Quentin Tarantino. He know he knows it, dude. Absolutely. You know. That's a wrap. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Uh, this is my final project for THE four hundred three. Jason, it was an absolute pleasure having you as a professor. I hope you enjoy this video and conversation. Cheers. Peace.